balloon angioplasty, which is used for treatment of CCSVI, has been utilized in, uh, in medicine for over 30 years and it has proven to be a very safe and efficient method. Uh, in my personal experience uh, in performing the intravascular procedures for uh, 18 years now, I find uh, angioplasty in CCSVI, uh, a procedure which has a very good balance between the benefit for the patient and uh, the risk uh, related to complications. Of course, we have to have in mind that uh, though CCSVI is very common uh, in patients with multiple sclerosis, there is still no proof that all patients uh, with MS have CCSVI and there is no proof, at least for now, that uh, the procedure, even a successful procedure for CCSVI will help patients uh, with multiple sclerosis. So the, we're not, we cannot be sure that a well done uh, venous angioplasty would relieve the MS symptoms. This is uh, under investigation and uh, there are a lot of sites, uh, a lot of centers in the world who uh, work on gaining knowledge and uh, analyzing data. In our experience, uh, we have noticed that vast majority of our patients uh, experience benefit in their fatigue scale and um, quite a lot of patients experience uh, um, decrease in the EDSS score. So their um, comfort of life uh, increases uh, significantly and uh, in, uh, in smaller but significant percentage of our patients their disability score decreases. During those uh, almost two years now of performing the uh, angioplasty in CCSVI our methods uh, have evolved though uh, we still our main tool is a uh, standard angioplasty balloon. Uh, we have uh, introduced uh, novel, uh, modern uh, balloon catheters. First of all, we, we have introduced a uh, cutting balloon. That's a, mm, uh, it's a special balloon with tiny blades uh, stuck on it. And uh, uh, the purpose of these blades is to cut the tissue uh, which makes the which obstructs the flow in the vein. Uh, very often it's very though it's elastic but it's very hard and uh, it's not compliant to a normal balloon and when we're using the cutting balloon it's uh, the, the procedure is very successful. Another uh, usage for the cutting balloons is mm, are, the, are, the, are patients with restenosis. Restenosis in most of the cases is related to the hyperplasia of um, the tissue and that's a sort of a healing response uh, for, uh, to the angioplasty. And the tissue mm, uh, in restenosis is very hard and it's, uh, and it's rigid. And that's, that's when the cutting balloons are very useful. Uh, another uh, modern balloon which we use is the high pressure balloons. Uh, the mm, standard angioplasty balloon uh, can take up to eight uh, atmospheres and the uh, high pressure balloons can be blown up to 18 atmospheres. And what's important, uh, even blowing them up to 18 atmospheres does not make them increase in their size. So there's no risk of uh, burst of rupturing the vein. Uh, when talking about rupturing the vein, we can uh, uh, we have to mention what's our policy for stenting. Uh, after initial enthusiasm of uh, using stents in the veins, 
uh, now we are very careful uh, because it's not that the stents migrate of course they can migrate you have to take it under consideration but if you implant the stent properly and uh, take care of the proper placement and proper uh, implantation and then post dilatation of the stent the risk of migra migration is well actually neglectable that's why we believe that stenting should be reserved only for emergency cases so only for patients in whom complications like dissection of the vein or rupture of the vein happens in this case yes we will definitely use stenting uh, to, to treat the complication, but otherwise, as an elective procedure, no, not at the moment. We believe that we should wait for a modern uh, generation of stents, which would be dedicated to the veins. Of course, the, um, there are uh, shades of the method, and uh, uh, what's most sort of important and uh, nah, the issue which is uh, very difficult for us and for our patients is the restenosis rate. Uh, we know that uh, the veins tend to get restenosed after the angioplasty in like, something like 50%. Mm, there, that's, a, that's a condition that you cannot predict because um, the experience is uh, is scarce, and uh, and we 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 don't have the, uh, the randomized groups to to see who is going to have uh, more probability of restenosis. But um, I think that uh, what we are implementing right now, so uh, more often uh, use of high pressure and cutting balloons I think is going to reduce the restenosis rate to, to some acceptable like 20% CCSVI or the angioplasty for CCSVI for now cannot be done instead of any other accepted by the neurology societies and the guidelines of neurology societies uh, treatments so um, and uh, another thing which we stress is that uh, the best results that we have observed uh, are in patients who, apart from uh, having had treatment for CCSVI, also uh, are treated by rehabilitation, proper diet, healthy lifestyle, proper hydration. So the things that all of uh, our patients should bear in mind uh, that they help the effect of the of the procedure.